Kappa Alpha Theta hosted their final Theta Encore last night. Coming up, we'll take a look at who this fundraiser benefited and how the charity event made history. Good evening and thank you for tuning in to Newswatch Ole Miss. I'm Sarah Kate Calaguire. And I'm Avery Sadler. Members of Kappa Alpha Theta are celebrating their most successful fundraiser in the sorority's history, but the night was bittersweet for some of these women. The sorority's headquarters is closing the chair closing the chapter on campus due to lack of recruitment. Newswatch reporter Mary Claire Kelly says they're leaving a charitable legacy behind. For the 17th consecutive year, the curtain went up on Kappa Alpha Theta's Panhellenic Wide Dance Competition. Hundreds of people piled into the Ford Center for the sold-out show on Wednesday night to show their support for their girls on stage. During the event, each sorority performs a themed dance routine. Senior dancer Claire Sanford said that she loved the crowd's enthusiasm. Performing for the whole student body was really cool just because um, they normally don't get to see me like dance or show my talent so that was really awesome and then hearing them like scream for you was a really cool feeling just to know that they were out there supporting you. Through ticket sales and donations, Theta Encore raised more than $90,000 to benefit CASA in Lafayette County. CASA promotes court-appointed volunteer advocacy for abused and neglected children in the United States so that they might find a permanent home and be given the chance for a successful future. Throughout the years, Theta Encore has raised money to benefit CASA and bring awareness to this incredible program. But maybe this won't be the last time you see this philanthropy event in action. The event's fundraising director, Sydney Serdashny, said that she is hopeful for the future. And I think it will continue on just because it is such a great tradition and everybody seems to love it. The Office of Leadership and Advocacy is considering adopting the event. Mary Claire Kelly, News Watch, Ole Miss. The total amount that the event raised is still not known. In Mississippi news, a man has gone viral after wearing a racist shirt inside a polling place in Olive Branch on Tuesday. The man has been identified as Clayton Hickey, an Olive Branch resident whose shirt said Mississippi Justice and showed a noose displayed in the middle of a Confederate flag. Hickey treats patients at a Memphis hospital, and fellow voters were so disturbed that they snapped photos and now his employer, Regional One Health, is invest investigating. A night of fun in a Southern California town turning to tragedy in a moment. A gunman opens fire, killing 12 people before turning the gun on himself. If you hear gunshots, fire, one person advising there's a subject inside shooting. An all too familiar dispatch as police get word of another mass shooting, this time in Thousand Oaks, California. We're countries, we got multiple people down. We need a lot of ambulance. Sheriff's investigators have identified the gunman. They say he was a former Marine and known to law enforcement. In April of this year, deputies were called to his house uh, for a subject disturbing. They called out our crisis intervention team, our mental health specialist, who met with him, talked to him, and cleared him. The horror began around 11.30 p.m. when he entered the Borderline Bar and Grill. The country bar was hosting a college night, and it was packed with students. So then our friends got the bar stools and they started slamming it against the window so we could get out. <laughs> Hours after the shooting, loved ones were desperate for answers. Some receiving the news no parent wants to hear. This is going to be an absolute heart-wrenching time for me and my family. At least a dozen people were killed, including Sheriff's Deputy Ron Helis, who was one of the first to respond. Gave his all. As I told his wife, he died a hero because he went... <clears throat> He went in to save lives, to save other people. In honor of his sacrifice, a procession traveled with Helis's body as he was taken from the hospital to the examiner's office. Actress Tamara Mowry's niece Elena was one of the victims in the shooting. We'll keep you updated on this developing story. Last night, 47-year-old Andrew Lee Brown was pronounced dead at the scene after he was struck and dragged by a truck in Lafayette County. Brown's body was sent to the medical examiner's office in Jackson for an autopsy. The type and size of the vehicle is unknown. The death of Brown is being further investigated by Oxford Police Department and Lafayette County Coroner's Office. Mississippi U.S. Senator Cindy Hyde-Smith has accepted an invitation to debate her Democratic opponent, Mike Espy, a week before the November 27th runoff. The debate is planned to be televised on November 20th in Jackson. Espy sent Hyde Smith a letter yesterday challenging her to three debates. 
The winner of the runoff will serve the final two years of a term started by Thad Cochran, the Republican senator who retired in April. A clinical trial from a new drug made from marijuana has been approved to treat children with epilepsy. Following a rigorous review process, the University of Mississippi Medical Center and the UM School of Pharmacy on, Jack on the Jackson campus is conducting the trial. The study will determine the safety and tolerability of the medication for children with uncontrollable seizures due to epilepsy. The six-month study involves 10 patients whose epilepsy affects their everyday lives. Veterans Day is Sunday, but some at Ole Miss are already celebrating. Newswatch reporter Amanda Haley shows us why the troops are already rallying. It looked a bit like a military parade on campus. Officers and cadets representing the ROTC unit at Ole Miss were in their full uniforms. Behind me here at the Lyceum, setup is taking place for the Chancellor's Review of Ole Miss ROTC. This event is really important to ROTC members and requires a lot of preparation. It takes a lot of coordination and time to ensure that this is a perfect event. If the Chancellor notices something, it's his opportunity to say something to the ROTCs. But we, provide, we pride ourselves on perfections. The review is a way for commanders to inspect the battle readiness of their units. Now, it is also a way to honor the service men and women that wore the uniforms before them. Those vets will be celebrated this Sunday on Veterans Day. I hope for people around the campus to be able to see this and to be able to think of service members that have worn the uniform that have gone before. And I want them to be thankful and to be grateful for all those servicemen. While the Chancellor salutes ROTC, the ROTC members salute the service members of our country. Amanda Haley, Newswatch, Ole Miss. And according to College Factual, Ole Miss is ranked the best college for veterans in Mississippi. With the holiday season upon us, the university shuttle service is experiencing an increase in traffic. Newswatch reporter Grant Gibbons has more. The Ole Miss Department of Outreach shuttle service is gearing up for a busy holiday season. The service is open to students, staff, alumni, and anyone visiting the university, says Supervisor Drew Windham. Primarily, we serve people visiting the university for educational conferences. With many shuttle drivers going home for the holidays, the department is looking for ways to maximize the drivers that they will have. All right, our goal is to serve the student body and the university's faculty staff first. Student worker Daniel Cloisuntia will be one of the drivers going up to Memphis during the holidays. Uh, what I've heard is that we're doing a like a charter bus and just having you know everybody that's coming just having them get on the charter bus and everything. Even with the low number of workers, the Department of Outreach has plans in place to make sure that students catch their flights and make it home on time for the holidays. And we are the university, and so those, the students, whether they ride with us or not, they are, they're expecting the university to provide certain services for their tuition, and um, we want to make sure we accomplish that. The rates for the shuttles are as followed. Round trip is $135, whereas a one-way trip will cost you $85. For Newswatch Old Miss, I'm Grant Gibbons. To schedule a shuttle ride, you can call the university's Department of Parking and Transportation. As the fall semester comes to a close, students are scrambling to sign up for the spring semester classes. With so many students trying to make the perfect schedule, it can sometimes be difficult for everyone to get into their ideal choices. We spoke to various students to see how their advising is going. I have trouble getting into science classes and pretty much classes needed for my major, like the major requirements, because um, students that's like seniors and juniors get first picks, and I'm a sophomore, so I have to like sign up for other classes because it wasn't available. Not the early registration, but I have friends that are normally, like normal registration. And they need to open some more sections because it's really hard for them to get into classes that they need to graduate. But um, I feel like they're working on it, but they still need to add some stuff, some more classes. I guess it went all right. Uh, he, he was very helpful in, you know, trying to get me to go to med school and whatnot. And with my engineering major, being a sophomore, um, I went and visited the H power people to the health professions advising office um, yeah no they, they've been really helpful last week was the beginning of the advising window and it will be open until the spring semester starts in January so there still is time to move around classes and get off waiting lists new stores are popping up all over Oxford and this one is for all the gamers out there anyone looking to play Dungeons and Dragons or to learn some new games need to check this place out Newswatch reporter Annie Sharp is in studio to tell us more. Annie? Thanks, Avery. 
The Gamer's Den is a place where board games are encouraged and electronics are set aside. They sell games, play games, and even have snacks for the players. I spoke with the owners to learn more about what's going on at the Gamer's Den. Gamer's Den is a new place in Oxford off Heritage Drive. Games, you can order games, um, and like I said, we hold events, so uh, we have tournaments, we have just, and if you just want to come in and have a place to play, then that's what we're here for too. They officially opened back in September, but the ribbon cutting ceremony wasn't held until October 31st. We had some uh, <laughs> friends, uh, neighbors across the street, who introduced us into it when we moved to Oxford. And so uh, we started looking into offering a place for people to come play and, and also sell supplies for, your, for the gaming needs. Though they are welcome, this place isn't just for the typical board games like Monopoly or the Game of Life. You could come in and play Magic, uh, Magic the Gathering, which is a card game, very collectible, large following. We have tons of Magic guys who come in here every day. Uh, of course, Dungeons & Dragons, which is the role-playing game. Uh, you can play Wizards, Fighters, Warlocks, all sorts of uh, wonderful creatures and things. And of course, tabletop wargaming. As behind you, there's a large selection of uh, wargaming tables that people can come in and play with. <laughs> now that they are officially open, go check them out. They are located off Heritage Drive. Bring your own games and go learn a new one. Back to you guys. Thanks, Annie. Coming up, find out who President Trump is now considering for U.S. Attorney General. And stay tuned to see which ruling a federal appeals court upheld today and how it will affect undocumented Im immigrants. But first, Gavin Norton has your first look at the current conditions. Your weather headlines for this weekend start off with cold temperatures, and those are going to persist through the weekend. We also have a high chance of rain as the weekend closes on Monday, and we're going to have consistent cloud cover from today all the way until about the same time next week. If we want to take a look and see what our radar image shows us, as we can see, Oxford, again, not too much going on, not too much going on in the local area at all quite yet, but that doesn't mean we're safe from cold temperatures. More of that coming up next on Stormwatch. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just going to drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh, man, the selfies. <laughs> selfies nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on, man, let's put a ride home. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. I, Kristen, take you, Jamie, to be my wife. When we found out that we were pregnant, we were just elated. We were just sitting there waiting for the pediatrician. She said she won't be taking you in as a client. We are a lesbian couple, but she's just a baby. She's the one you're denying the service to. The White House suspended the press credentials of CNN Chief White House Correspondent Jim Acosta yesterday. The removal of Acosta's White House access came hours after President Trump had an issue with the questions Acosta asked at a press conference. After a back and forth between the President and Acosta, an intern took the microphone from Acosta. Acosta then tried to keep it and made contact with the intern. Sarah Sanders made a statement accusing Acosta of placing his hands on the intern and explaining that, it's reason, the, that that is the reason his pass was taken away. Acosta told Anderson Cooper that he was only trying to ask a question. CNN issued a statement accusing the White House of punishing Acosta because of his questions. 
Police were called to the home of Fox News host Tucker Carlson in Washington, D.C. last night after protesters showed up. Antifa, which calls itself an anti-fascist group, previously targeted Ted Cruz and other right-wing figures. Videos were seen on Twitter of protesters at Carlson's home shouting threats. The Twitter account for the group also shared Carlson's address, which is a violation of Twitter's rules. Today, the Metropolitan Police Department said they are conducting an inv investigation into the incident. 85-year-old Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg fractured three ribs after falling in her office last night. Ginsburg went home after the fall and was admitted to George Washington University this morning. Ginsburg was the second woman to serve on the high court after being appointed by President Bill Clinton in 1993. Ginsburg's health has become the subject of much attention in recent years as she underwent a heart procedure in 2014 and was treated for pancreatic cancer in 2009. Ginsburg did say in July she hopes to stay on the bench past 2020. Yesterday, President Trump fired Attorney General Jeff Sessions. The President is considering former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie and Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi to replace Sessions. Many potential contenders have cropped in, in Trump-friendly circles in recent months due to Trump's long-standing frustrations with Sessions. Christie has a good relationship with Trump's son-in-law and senior advisor Jared Kushner. The two have been working on prison reform for the past few months. Bondi's second and final term as Attorney General will end in January, and she has not made a decision as to what she will do next. Today, a federal appeals court upheld a ruling blocking the Trump administration from ending the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals programs. This Obama-era program protects young undocumented immigrants who came to the U.S. as children from being deported. Challengers are arguing that the planned phase-out is illegal and they will likely succeed in their argument. Options have been discussed to extend DACA or provide a path to citizenship in exchange for funding for a wall along the U.S.-Mexico border. A rainy election day in Pennsylvania turned into a bright moment between one elderly couple and local firemen. The couple didn't let the rain stop them from making it to the polls and exercising their right to vote. As they made their way up the sidewalk, two members of the Cornwells Fire Company noticed them and hurried to cover them. The couple walked hand in hand under signs held by the firemen. This was a much appreciated yet unusual job for the firemen. That is such a sweet story. I saw those images and I just thought it was so sweet. Oh, it made my heart melt. Well, the cold weather is definitely making its way to Oxford as it has been a chilly day. And coming up, in his extended forecast, Gavin Morton will let us know if the warmer weather will ever make a return. Listen, you're my friend. I noticed you haven't really been yourself recently. Yeah, I feel like something's up. How are you? Are you okay? Is there anything you want to talk about? I just want to know how you're feeling. And listen, even if you don't know what to say, I'm here to talk. No matter what you're going through, I just want you to know I'm here. I've got your back. When you want to talk, I'm here. Did you put a new dent in that? This one? No. Were you texting and driving again? Yes. Hi, Leah. Hi, Dad. Sorry about your bumper. <laughs> <laughs> Disaster tips from the objects left behind. My home wasn't insured, but you can check your insurance policy now to make sure you're covered. Oh. My savings are lost, but you can put money aside and plan for unexpected disaster costs. We're lost forever, but you can scan important documents now so they survive. Whoa! 
For more tips on how to prepare, visit ready.gov. Welcome back to Stormwatch. I'm Gavin Norton. As the sun goes down earlier and earlier, so do the temperatures. Right now we're sitting at a cool 54 degrees and it's partly cloudy. If we want to take a look and see what the region is looking like, we can see that there are some clouds in the area and those will linger around just for a little while. But again, nothing too serious as far as weather is concerned. We're not going to see any tornadoes again is what I'm trying to say. If we want to take a look, we can see that the local region is pretty well packed in the, in the low to mid 50s. And tomorrow there's not going to be much change. We're only going to get up to about about 50 degrees here in the Oxford and upper Mississippi area. Taking a closer look back at us, we can see that tonight's temperatures are going to bring us down to 41 degrees, that too with a little bit of clouds and a high chance of rain. Tomorrow though, if you're optimistic about things looking up, I'm so sorry to burst your bubble. It's going to be 53 degrees again, and that is the high, but a low chance of rain, so at least you have an umbrella to leave at home. Now taking a look, we can see our extended forecast. We can see that over the next coming week, the temperatures are going to linger around 49 degrees, the high 40s, with Tuesday dropping all the way down to 37 and heavy clouds. That's back to you. Thanks, Gavin. Coming up, see which Ole Miss football player is close to breaking yet another school record. And see what the cross-country teams plan on doing to continue their hot streak into regionals this weekend. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kissed them all soundly and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. Think getting dumped by text is harsh? Try getting dumped by a tennis ball. My ex owner drove me out to the woods, yelled fetch, and by the time I bought the ball back, he was gone. Yeah, I was pissed. But the folks at the shelter helped me let go of my anger. I learned coping skills, like taking it to the hole. Boom! Now I'm ready to fetch again. But how about I throw and you run and get it? Good evening Rebel fans and welcome to Sports Watch. I'm Jason Price. The Ole Miss men and women's cross country teams will be competing in the NCAA South Regional Meet tomorrow at Florida State. The men's team is coming off a historic SEC championship win and is looking to qualify for the fifth year in a row. The Lady Rebels will be trying to defend their 2017 South Regional title in one of the toughest matchups in the nation. Both of these teams will be fighting for those top two spots in the South Regional which would automatically qualify them for the NCAA championships. If both teams win tomorrow, I think it's safe to say we're a cross-country school. Last night in Baton Rouge, the Rebel Volleyball team lost to LSU in a heartbreaker. Even in the loss, the five-set match produced career best from four Rebel players. One of those players was Emily Stroop breaking the program record for strikes for the third time this season. Senior libero Caroline Adams had a career day as well, racking up 33 total digs and seven in the first set. The second set was full of scoring streaks and lead changes, including nine straight points at one point from Ole Miss. The Tigers would clutch out two sets in a row to squeeze past the Rebels, and the team hopes to bounce back on Sunday when they go to College Station to take on Texas A&M. Though Ole Miss football isn't currently in its prime, A.J. Brown has been in his prime all season long, averaging more than 100 yards a game. 
Brown needs just 63 yards to be the all-time leading receiver in school history, and if you've, if you've watched him at all this year, you know 63 yards is a cakewalk. His incredible year has also caught the eyes of the Bill Netkoff Award Committee, which is given to the best receiver in the country. Brown and his fellow top-tier receivers will all need to play an award-winning game on Saturday to give the Rebs their best shot against the Aggies. And finally, we have a pretty good Thursday night football showdown with the 6-2 Panthers headed to Pittsburgh to take on the 5-2 Steelers. Cam Newton and the Panthers are coming off an easy win over the Buccaneers last Sunday, while Big Ben and the Steelers picked up their fourth straight win after beating the Ravens. Now everyone knows that Antonio Brown goes full speed on every play, but did you know that he does almost everything full speed? Well, the Pittsburgh police found that out earlier today when they pulled over Brown in a black Porsche after he had sped past going 100 miles an hour. Brown got himself a ticket, but I've got a feeling that he won't have a problem paying it off. Make sure to watch Speedy Brown and the Steelers host the Panthers tonight at 6, 720. Well, that's all we got for sports, so be sure to follow us on Twitter at Newswatch underscore UM for more of your favorite sports updates. Now it's back to you guys. Thanks, Jason. Up next, find out the great game plan one football coach had for his recent proposal. Stay tuned to see the surprise on his girlfriend's face and why there weren't any flags on this sweet play. Here is my handle and here is my spell. When I get all steamed up, then I shout. Tip! Me over and pour me out. Oh. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Cheers. Take time to be a dad today. We are Old Miss Rebels. As Mississippi's flagship university, we dig deeper, see farther, work harder. We pioneered human organ transplants. We helped prove Einstein's theory of gravitational waves. We are distinguished as a Carnegie R1 top 2.5% research institution. We are Ole Miss, transforming lives and the world. When I was your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. Now, I get to search for life in the universe. And who knows, maybe life is looking for us, too. So we're like aliens to them? Yeah! Does anyone want to be a scientist now? I do. Awesome! We need more girls in STEM. Maybe we can find aliens. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love. Remember that to love America is to love all Americans because love has no labels. Well, it wasn't a snap decision, but it was quite the proposal. During their game last Friday, one Georgia football team assisted their wide receivers coach in running a life-changing play. The Lanier High School coach enlisted the help of his senior players who handed out flowers to his girlfriend. As she collected the roses from the boys, the coach surprised her by getting down on one knee. He popped the question, which of course ended with a yes. The touching moment was met with cheers and applause. Video and images of the proposal were shared online and quickly went viral. Well, if that story didn't make your heart melt, I don't know what will. Me too. So speaking of melting, we're probably not going to be melting this week, right, Gavin? Can you remind us of what we're going to see weather-wise? Unlikely chance of melting. We are going to be above freezing, but just barely. The weather isn't really going to get above 50 degrees over the next week. So ice cubes are going to stay pretty much as they are. <laughs> oh, no. Well, thank you so much. That's all we have for tonight. Thank you for tuning in to Newswatch Ole Miss. I'm Sarah Kate Caliguire. Be sure to join us here again tomorrow night at 5 and on NewsWatchOleMiss.com. I'm Avery Sadler. Thank you and good night.